Hello, welcome back. Uh, I was going to play some more Beacon Pines today. I think where we left off, we were about to go try to find our friend Rolo, who uh, is missing. And I think I was told to go to the library. So let's just get right into it. Uh, and I forgot the controls, kind of. <laughs> okay, there we go. Hey, Bert. Have you seen Rolo? Nope. Though I've mostly been talking to clipboards, they're setting up lots of stuff for the festival. This one said he had to process some answers. I told him that was fine. I'll wait right here until he gets back. Um, so... Oh, God, it's this fox guy again. Howdy, Luca. Hello again, Pete. I'm not Pete, you silly goose. It's Toby. You could have fooled me. Well, hey, it's no problemo. The important thing is, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, I'm getting that impression. We're all part of something special, Luca. And it all starts right here in Beacon Pines. I got it. That's right. So how about you start by telling me... Look, no offense, but I've got my own stuff to take care of. Gah, you joker. We're all part of this together. You'll let us know when you're free to answer a few questions. Okay. I really need, we really need to get back to work. Just a couple more minutes. Have they just not been working since I saw them? <laughs> if Roxy says she will be here, then she will be here. I just don't see why I'm standing around doing nothing. And waiting for Roxy, when I could be standing around, doing nothing, and getting paid for it. Come on, Lumi, Roxy needs our help. Yeah, well, good intentions don't qualify as legal tender. Wow, not a great friend. I gotta say something about it. Ah, oh, my parents wouldn't listen. No offense, but isn't Rolo always getting into trouble? Something feels different this time. What can we do to help? We need to check where the adults aren't. So I guess it's up to us to check deep weep wood. Our shift doesn't end for another couple of hours. We could spend the time making posters. That would be great. I guess. Right. Fitz and I will check weep wood. We'll be back later to pick up the posters. I think my dad has a map of weep wood. Let's swing by my house and grab it before we head out. The search party has begun. Oh, wait, what the heck? I did not mean to do that. Hi, hey, Luca, what's up? You haven't seen Rolo around recently, have you? He doesn't come around here much. Not since they made a rule that he can only order decaf. A little caffeine addict. His eyes went wide in disbelief. What do you mean, vanished? That's impossible. Oh my. He doesn't even see the danger he's in. Uh-oh. Uh, is there something over here? Oh, I didn't think I came here last time. Hey, Don. Yawn. Is it true about Rolo? Yeah, he didn't come home last night. I wonder if it's connected. Connected to what? I was checking in on reports about increased activity around town. What sort of activity? Windowless trucks, mechanical noises, strange lights, your typical shady stuff. Who would be doing all that and why? Well, I have a few leads. The Valentine family is always suspicious. Perennial Harvest certainly has the resources. Do you have any idea where Rolo could be? The best place to start looking is where the trail went cold. Where did you see him last? We were in Weep Wood. Right by Valentine's Fertilizer. I'll check out Weep Wood when my shift ends. I'll do my- I do my best work at night. I see. Of course she's like dozing off during the day. It's funny. Hmm, guess Mrs. Fratelli is getting ready for the festival. Okay. What's this about a missing child? I must stress that the situation is completely under control. It just all seems so terrible. And you're sure there's nothing we can do to help? 
nonsense. Young Mr. Cotter will turn up safe and sound, I am certain. You just focus on settling in. I trust my sister has supplied you with suitable lodging. Oh yes, Miss Valentine has been more than accommodating. We were just telling our daughter, Beck, that... Huh? Now where does she run off to? Is Beck the little squirrel girl? I didn't really pay attention to her name. Oh wait, was I able to go down here? I didn't check down here either, right? Hmm. Yeah. Oh, I only explored like half the town. Oh, is that a giant watermelon? Oh, I touched it! It said not to. <laughs> hey, Griffin. Has Rollo been by? I haven't seen him all day. I'm sure he'll show up safe and sound. And when he does, tell him there's a strawberry chocolate double scoop waiting for him. On the house. He'll like that. I wonder if it'll break if I keep touching it. It makes a pretty satisfying sound. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's so cute. Hey, Ilsun. History Museum. It's laughable, really. Did you see Rollo in there? No, just the shadow of a family clinging on to a town, clinging on to the past. Oh, my. <laughs> Very dramatic. Feel free to check for yourself, but don't expect to have your mind blown. All right. Can't be that bad. Oh god, it's a slideshow. We all know Beacon Pines is a great town. What you may not know is great towns grow from mighty roots. Uh. That is why you cannot tell the story of Beacon Pines without telling the story of one sharper Valentine. Oh god. Sharper's keen intellect and strong moral fiber led to a grand vision. A vision of a community dedicated to a better tomorrow. In his own words, a better tomorrow is within our grasp, but it requires a <laughs> decided to grow that vision here in Beacon Pines. And how does one grow a better tomorrow? With fertilizer, of course. Challenge this is just an ad. Can I get out of here? Let me out. Experiment gone wrong. An accident which took Sharper away from us far too soon. Oh, dang. To this day, we struggle to pick up the pieces. But one foul harvest isn't enough to stop the people of Beacon Pines. The spirit of Sharper Valentine lives on. It lives in the hearts of God. <laughs> dream for a better tomorrow. Together we will follow his example and grow a bountiful future. Paid for by the Valentine family and the Valentine Fertilizer Company Rutherford Fund. Well, that was a something. Unhelpful, yes. That's the nice way of putting it. Look at those pastries. They look so tasty. Hmm. Okay, well, off we go. What can we find? Oh, hello. Joey? No, sorry, Luca. I've had my eyes in the dirt looking for beetles. I can't seem to find any. He never came home last night. Do you think it's because it's been colder than normal? I don't see why that would have anything to do with Rolo. No, the beetles! Do you think the temperature confused their circadian rhythm or something? Who's to say? I'm no beetologist. Just keep an eye out for him, would you? Of course! What's over here? Oh, right. It's just this, like... Well, I mean, I kind of want to make sure there's nothing over there. Can I come in this house now? Please let me in. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, uh, dang, they boarded up the way in. Hey, can I just bust it down? No? What about over here? Ooh, toxic sludge. Eh, uh, uh, oh, okay, I guess I gotta go around. I guess I don't blame him. I wouldn't want to step in the sludge either. Property of Valentine Fertilizer Company. Looks old. 
Is that it? Uh, oh, right. I was supposed to go check the library. Oh, look, the door is open. <laughs> I just, I didn't even notice. Was it open last time? I think it wasn't. Hello. Hey, Jace. Oh, hey, Luca. Did Rolo come by? No. I was actually surprised. He's usually here early on days when a new issue drops. Rolo's the biggest Hank Atomic fan I know. Besides myself, that is. Well, if he does swing by, tell him to meet me you know where. I don't know where. No, he knows where. Oh, roger that, Space Cadet. Ooh, books. Hardly any actual new edition. Simply a variety of existing content rotated into the front display each week. Not fooling anyone. Man, it's a small library. I've eaten a salad-centric travel guide for the mildly adventurous. Yuck. Sally Seashore's simple succulent sundries. Luca brushed off a smudge of dust. Or maybe it was flour. Thirty recipes so easy you'll doubt it's even edible. You'll doubt it's even edible. Hmm. A peek behind the curtain. The methods and ruminations of Patrick C. Montesquieu. One of the greatest acting minds of our time. By Patrick C. Montesquieu. Ah, maybe he should meet the Valentines. They'd get along. Cotto volunteered at the library during the summer. He wasn't very social, so he'd dedicate each summer to becoming an expert in a single subject, making him a reliable source of very particular knowledge. <laughs> if you were to ask Cotto something he didn't know, he'd escape into the dusty old bookshelves and return with just the right thing. Hey, Cotto. Cotto was lost in his reading. Luca crooked his neck to see the title. Introduction to Melitology? Melitology? Oh. So like a little kid. The little kid runs the library. Oh, hey, Luca. You snuck up on me. Good book. So now, just started it. To the shelves. I'm really running out of books I haven't read yet. So now it's on to the wonderful world of bees. Yo, another beekeeper. Turns out bees are pretty cool. Yeah, they are. For instance, did you know that around 70% of bee species actually live in underground tunnels? Or that if there are two queens in a hive, they will fight to the death for supremacy. Oh. That's interesting, but you haven't seen Rolo around recently, have you? Not since yesterday. Keep an eye out for him, okay? Sure thing. If I see him, you'll be the first to know. Oh. Good bee pun. Very basic bee pun. The entire top level of the library was devoted to most of which were Hank Atomic and the myriad of lesser... Oops. All right. Do, do, do. Okay, well, he's not here. What sort of monster puts candy behind a locked door? Oh, yeah, Mr. Nuncreed works weird hours sometimes. Of course he does. How about you? When do I work? No. What's your name? Luca Van Horn. You new here? Yeah, not by choice. Family moved often, giving her little time to establish any real connections. She would tell you she prefers it that way. I'm looking for my friend Rolo. He didn't come home last night. So he's missing? I guess so. Like, missing, missing? Does that sort of thing happen a lot around here? He shifted his feet uncomfortably. Well, that sucks. Yeah. So, I should probably get going. Hey, wait up. What? I'm coming with you. What? So says the unlucky penny. Unlucky. Yeah, well, technically it landed on heads. Leave this kid to find his friend alone. But I always do the opposite. Oh, that's kind of like me and Rolo. I guess Rolo is my unlucky penny. That settles it. A person should never be without their unlucky penny. Let's go find him. That's kind of funny. The name's Beck. Pleasure to meet you, Beck. I suppose I could use some help. Try to keep up. Uh, well, I already looked over there. What was over there? I don't even remember. Uh, where could I check still? I guess I could go look in the tree house. Hmm. 
Right. Hey Judson, have you seen Roll This Way? Afraid not. As elusive as the fish in this here pond. Yeah. Does this like start the memory again? Oh, I see. Do I have any new bait? I do. Luca tied a small magnet to the line. Fishing with the law of attraction. That's not gonna work. They're not made of metal. Yeah, get over here, fish. I guess there's probably metal things in the lake, though. <laughs> it's key. Where do you think the lock for the ski is? Now, why would we want to find that? Because then we would know the secret. God, that's no fun. The second we know what it unlocks, it just becomes a boring old key. Right now, this key could, un could unlock anything. Cool. Luca wrapped some tape around the hook. Hey, you never know. <laughs> Waterproof tape that still works underwater. Pull the fish in. Come on. Well, I've yet to catch a fish. It's got a bunch of big words written on it. Let's see that. We regret to inform you that your application for property rights with respect to the Beacon Pine CBD and surrounding area has been rejected. Who is that for? Applicant Valentine Estate. Good. Good. <laughs> the dad. He knows. All right. Oh, he's not up here. Uh, okay. I guess I'll just go back to the woods now that I have uh, Beck with me, maybe? Eh? Oh, I'm just standing around looking cool. Yeah. How close will it get? Just chilling. All right. He's sleeping still. Ah. What kind of animal is Beck? Is Beck like a dog or a fox? Maybe a fox? It's kind of hard to tell. Um, yeah, I mean, there's nothing else for me to do here. Okay. There we go. Luca felt a chill as he approached Beck. Her eyes were locked on the strange green liquid. The ooze. Coated in a fine layer of frost. Uh, is this sort of thing normal around here? Because puddles of glowing ooze are definitely not what I expected from this place. I have no idea what this stuff is. Well, the next obvious step is science. And what does science suggest? Poke it with a stick! Luca watched as Beck dipped a broken tree branch into the goo. Beck's eyes widened as flowers grew from the dead wood. Oh. There were small buds, which quickly bloomed into vibrant petals. What the? Cool. As quickly as they had grown, the flowers began to shrivel. And turn gray. Oops. Drop the stick with a grunt of disgust. Okay. So the science tells us that this gunk is weird as hell. Uh, yeah, it seems dangerous. Hey, Tish, look what the dra cat dragged in. Oh, it's the bullies. Yup. Oh my god, Tish is huge. I don't have time for this right now, Iggy. Ah, uh, don't say things like that. It hurts Tish's feelings. Ain't that right, Tish? Yup. She looks fine to me. Why, hello. I don't think we've been properly introduced. Iggy's the name. This is my compatriot, Tish. Yup. You've probably heard of us. Uh, can't say I have. I'll forgive you just this once, on account of you being new around here. Why would you hang out with this stud? Uh, he seems pretty alright. Iggy, why do you have to be so... you? Has he even told you that his parents skipped out on him? Shut up. 
It's true. They got tired of having such a pathetic kid and left him. Iggy, I'm only gonna say this one time. Don't talk about my family. <laughs> well, look who's grown a backbone now that the girl's around. First his pop, his pops croaked. Then his mom finally couldn't take it anymore and bounced. Wow, this kid's awful. Also, this kid is tiny. Could see tears welling in Luca's eyes, his fists clenched. Some things about Beacon Pines were very different from the city. But a bully from a hayseed town is really no different from a city bully. Beck took a deep breath and thought. Time to bust out the tickles or strange. Uh probably the strange. All right, Luca, looks like you need a little mud bath. What's wrong with you, new kid? We're about to pound your friend. Beck stared in silence, the only sign of life being the twitch of an eye. It's weird when people don't talk. Yup. Stop being a weirdo. Uh, hello? Are you some kind of wackadoo? Makes sense. Wackadoos travel in packs, eh, dud? Ah! Oh, and he fell in the puddle. You jerk! My clothes are ruined! I'm gonna... Struggle. I don't feel so good. Oh my god, we killed him! I'm sorry, I just... Oh shit! Yep! Dang, that kid's all deformed now. That was intense. I think he's gonna be okay, right? Nothing about this seems okay. We have to find Rolo. You took the words out of my mouth. Okay, can I go this way now? No. No, still can't. I guess there's no path over there. Oh, it's this guy. Whoa there, little buddies. You startled me. What in the dickens are you up to in this part of town? We were just looking for Rolo. Oh, you haven't heard the good news. Rolo showed up safe and sound a bit ago. Really? So where was he? It's funny, really. He just got all turned around in the woods. They can be disorienting, you know? I am starting to get that impression. Rollo's at his ass now, getting some well-deserved rest. Wow, that's a relief. You two should scurry along before you get lost yourselves. Yeah, come on, Beck. Can't wait to introduce you to Rollo. Oh, that reminds me. Luca, your grandmother was looking for you. She was? She was worried sick. You should march straight home. I guess. Beck, your folks might be getting worried, too. I'll walk you home. I need to talk with Nellie about work anyway. Luca. I guess all's well that ends well? I'll introduce you to Rolo tomorrow. Sure. Glad he's okay. Nope. Rolo was safe. Or was he? Relief washed over Luca, which was quickly replaced by a sense of dread. Gran is going to kill me. If he hurried, he might just make it home before sundown. Chapter 4. Chapter 4. Our harvest awaits. Luca took a deep breath and gingerly opened the door, steeling himself for Gran's wrath. Dang. Is Gran a bully? Also, what, uh, what's going on with this tree thing over here? struggle oh i can fight back on this guy now strange has a question mark and then tickle i'll try fighting back on this one later i am curious what that does gran yeah can't move oh i'm home everything's fine gran 
You know, I did think it was suspicious when Gran got that phone call in the morning. I wonder if she's uh maybe a little more aware of what's going on than she lets on. Alone. The house was empty. So Gran's not back yet? I guess that's a good thing. Nothing to do now but sleep, I guess. Oh boy. Luca was sitting by the pond, listening to small waves lap against a rock. His father sat in a folding chair in front of him. Without turning, he spoke. Why don't you grab me some nice bait? Sure thing, Dad. Luca hopped over to the tackle box and popped open the lid. Inside was a rolling, buzzing mass. You're fishing with bees? Luca's father gave a warm chuckle. Well, you catch more fish with bees than honey. Pick us out a good one. Luca closed his eyes and plucked out a bee. He could feel its wings struggle between his finger and thumb. I'm not sure I can tolerate such violence when against bees. Drunk, he hurried over. His father deftly baited the hook and examined his work. Interesting choice. With a practiced flick of the wrist, the line buzzed in a graceful arc. The water accepted it without a splash or ripple. The wrong choice. But I respect it. The pond began to freeze over. Sometimes we gotta make the wrong choice before we can make it right. Pallid ice propagated across the still surface with an alarming speed. Luca scrambled back as the ground beneath him turned cold. Uh oh, bad ending. I don't understand. Sorry, kiddo. Understanding isn't always part of the deal. The relentless ice shot through the fishing line toward his father. Dad, look out! His father casually wound the reel. None of it's your fault, you know. Never was. Dad. We have to go. Luca grabbed his father's shoulders, trying to pull him away. Please. My God, this is a very intense dream. Ice crackled as it spread across it's making me nervous. That's the thing about fishing, Luca. His chest began to crystallize. You toss your hook in, and you never know what you're gonna pull out. A shock of searing cold ran up Luca's arm. He gave one last desperate. The chair tipped backwards in a single frozen mass. Luca tried to stop the momentum. But it was too late. He watched the icy form of his father slam into the hard ground, shattering into a thousand pieces. Oh my. Around his feet. Dad, I don't understand. What does all this mean? The gentle rustle of leaves was the only reply. Damn. We need to get you some therapy, Luca. Luca's uh... eyes struggled to focus on the walkie talkie. The walkie talkie. Rollo. Faintly, he could hear Rollo amongst the noise. Luca. Rollo, is that you? Luca. There? Rollo, it's the middle of the night. Luca, thank God. Listen, I don't know how long this thing will work down here. Down here? Rollo's voice was coming through more clearly now. But some words were still just static. Listen to me. Someone grabbed me yesterday. What? The man in the hazmat suit? It was... Took me to some sort of... I think I'm underground. Underground? Are you okay? Kinda. They seem more interested in... For now, at least. Mr. Care said you made it back home safe. Care? No. Trust. He's... Hold on. Someone's coming. Rollo? Rollo, where are you? He held still, waiting for a response. His pounding heartbeat marking the passage of time. Okay, I think they're gone. Getting worse. I can barely hear you. His voice began to fade. Losing signal. Not much time. Mission control. You need to... The treehouse. The treehouse! The signal died for good. Okay. What was he trying to say about the treehouse? What's at the treehouse? The antenna. He wants me to use the antenna in the treehouse to get a better signal. Rolo, you're a genius. He grabbed the walkie-talkie and sprinted to the treehouse. Okay. What's over here? Okay, fine. Go there later. Luca heard a group of footsteps approaching. He dashed behind the bushes to avoid being spotted. Oh, she is in on it. So we all understand our roles. Or maybe she's like working for the FBI or something. You can count on me. 
I think we still need more time. This wasn't the original plan. We're all in danger now. I, for one, refuse to sit idly while the dangers persist. Hiram, you just keep your wits about you. You're right. You can count on me. I just wish we could have made that deal with Eris Valentine. Her resources would have still come in handy. As I said, I had no time to contact her after your call this morning. Plans change. How's Luca holding up? He's fine. We shouldn't lose sight of the fact that this is all... I know very well what this is all for. We have no choice. Operation Sparkplug has a new objective. Are we in agreement? Good. We'll reconvene after the festival. Okay, yeah, I think she's working for, like, the FBI or something like that. Oh, she saw me. Gran? Why are you meeting with Mrs. Fratelli and Mr. Tolliver late at night? Oh, hey, Luca. Hello. <laughs> yeah! Don, you scared me. How long have you been there? Oh, just a few minutes. Earlier today, I saw Mr. Tolliver and your Gran enter the diner together. When my shift at the newsstand was over, they still hadn't left. So I used the greatest tool of any investigating reporter. Time. When they left, I tailed them here. What do you think they're up to? Whatever it is, they seem organized and determined. They mentioned the festival? Yeah, I heard that too. Has your grand been doing anything different recently? Anything strange? She got a phone call this morning and rushed out the door. A call from Heron Tolliver, it seems. She was either furious or terrified, or both. Luca, be careful out there. I think we might be in the middle of the scoop of a lifetime. I will. Aren't you coming out? Nah, I'm gonna stay out here for a bit longer. See ya, Luca. <laughs> she just slowly sinks back into the bush. Oh, right. Wait. Oh, why are they out here? Isn't it like midnight or something? I did it. I changed the sign. Splendid. Did anyone see you? I don't believe so. You were right. It was simple enough just to rearrange the letters. Odd choice for a prank, though. In situations such as these, odd is good. I can't wait for everyone to see the big reveal. It should be quite memorable. Let's make ourselves scarce for now. They're just saying all this, like, literally right in front of me. <laughs> did they change the letters? What did they change? This? Probably the History Museum letters? I kind of want to go see now. Okay, well, hopefully... Oh, fine. Can I go over here now? Nope. Alright. I'll just have to look later. Up we go. How did he hook it up? He just, is it? <laughs> okay, whatever. Rolo, Rolo, are you there? I'm at the treehouse now, Rolo. Mr. Care said you were all right. What happened out there? God, this is so intense. Dang it, Rolo, where are you? He said he was underground. Oh God, that scared me. Who, who's there? I could only see a cloaked shape behind the rocket. I've got weapons in here. So you better come out right now. To hear as a muffled voice began. Weapons. How could you hurt something that's already dead? Oh god, is it the kid? Who, who are you? What? You don't recognize me? I guess I don't even recognize myself anymore. Oh my god, it's the kid! I'm a monster. And now they hunt me like the beast I am. Iggy. Dang, his face got all messed up. 
touch me! This is all your fault! Well, I mean, it's not entirely your fault. I, I didn't mean to. I lost control. So you couldn't control yourself for a second, and I get to be like this forever? There must be a way to fix this. Oh, you're gonna be my savior? Perfect little Luca saves the day with his positive attitude and the power of friendship. I... None of this matters. There's no time. They're after me. They chased me all through Weep Wood. I only came in here to hide. Hide from who? Who's after you? Luca! Luca! Rolo? It's not safe, Luca! Rolo, where are you? The treehouse! I'm at the treehouse, Rolo. Where are you? No, Luca, the treehouse isn't safe. They said they were going to the treehouse. I was trying to tell you to stay away from the treehouse. Who said they're going to the treehouse? The clipboards! What did I tell you? Those perennial harvest wackadoos are after me. They've been chasing me, yelling questions at me. What sort of questions? They were saying the same stuff they always do. But it's different now. Less asking, more threatening. We're gonna figure this out, Iggy. Yeah, well, thanks. Uh-oh, hello? Is anyone present in this arboreal domicile? <laughs> Crap, they found me. Luca, what's happening? Don't panic, you stay here and I'll see what they want. Oh, wait. What? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Van Horn. We would love to hear your thoughts. Do you have time for an informal chat? We will be brief. Your time is valuable to us. Uh, be down in just a second. Of course, of course, of course, of course. How many? Are they like clones or something? We have a problem. Luca, you gotta get out of there. Who's out there? Is it them? Yeah, it's the clipboards. A bunch of them. How many? Maybe all of them? And yeah, you were right. They were saying the same stuff, but with the creepy knob cranked to 10. Might young Iggy be present? We would love to hear his thoughts. Run! I don't know what to do. I'm just so tired. Luca, what do we do? We turn back time, Iggy. Follow my lead. Luca and Iggy climbed up the back of the treehouse to its roof, where Rolo had constructed his MCDC. What? Mission control defense scanner. From behind the crowd of clipboards, William Kerr strode forward, a warm smile on his face. Iggy, there you are. You gave us all a heck of a scare. Go away. Just leave me alone. Oh, I'm sorry, Iggy, but no can do. Don't worry, though. We're here to help. Help? Then why were you chasing me? Luca, can you talk some sense into your pal there? Just look at him. He's not well. What's wrong with him? What did that gunk do to him? Well, that's a pretty honking big question, Luca. All you need to know is that he's sick. He's real sick, Luca. I just need you to let us up there and take care of him. You told me Rolo was okay, that was that he was back at his place resting. He is! Poor fella just got a little lost. That's a lie. That is a hurtful thing to say, Luca. I thought we were buddies. Why, because he lets you ramble on like a wackadoo? Nobody likes you, you creep. Why don't you pop on down here so we can have a face-to-face? -face? Yelling like this is going to give us all a heck of a sore throat. And who wants that? On the MCDC. What did you do to Rolo, you liar? Well, shucks, Luca. The only tiny fib I told you was that he was at home. He is resting, and he is perfectly safe. For now, at least. What happens to him next is up to you, Luca. Look around. You're in quite the pickle. And I am the only person in the whole wide world who can help you. You get to decide how this ends. Okay. Luca's mind raced. He was caught in a trap. What do you do when there's no hope? Iggy wiped his cheeks with a sleeve. What are you gonna do, Luca? Fight. Luca drew himself up and decided to take the only option they had left. 
Does this thing actually do anything though? Hey, Mr. Care. His most insolent demeanor. Rolo sends his regards. Yeah, okay. That was useless. <laughs> hey! That was uncalled for, more than a little rude, and just plain unsanitary. Luca, I really did think we were good pals. What a shame that it's come to this. Turned his back on the two boys. And this. looked to Iggy with resignation in his eyes and bad ending escalated quickly maybe discretion was the better part of valor here let's put a pin in this for now okay uh let's go so we can try tickle and maybe that makes it so he never gets all uh deformed or I could try to struggle. Um, let's try. I, I assume if I struggle here, it's probably going to do like a whole nother branch, which is what I assume this is. So let's just go back here. Time to bust out the tickles. Well, time to bust out the tickles. Hey, Tish, want to see something cool? Yep. Check it. Wait, Tish is the ticklish one? What the? Tish, is she tickling you? Yep. 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 Tears began to form in Tish's eyes as she gasped for breath between gales of laughter. Poor Tish. Yep, yep, yep. Zach redoubled her efforts until Tish finally had had enough. Yep. What just happened? She seems nice. Sorry for the interruption. I think you were just threatening us. He's also tiny. I just remembered. Uh, I have to s be somewhere. Hmm. See you around, new kid. No. Oh my god, did you splash it on her? Oh no. What a little creep. Uh, Beck, I think you got a little ooze in your hair. Well, okay, it only got in her hair. Is it bad? It depends. What are your feelings about having a more mature, refined look? Oh, God. Chapter four. Wait, so Beck just runs away? Policy. Luca paused for a moment, catching his breath. He'd only just met Beck, and somehow he already managed to drag her into this mess. Hopefully he could make it up to her. But finding Rolo was his primary concern. Uh, oh, hello. Luca, what the hell are you doing out here? And why did a kid with gray hair just run past us in a panic? And Fifth looked drained. It was clear they'd spent all day searching. That's Beck. I don't care who she is. What happened? We were just helping look for Rolo. Luca, I need you to start telling me the truth. His temper could often be dismissed as the impatience of an older sibling. But this was the most intense Luca had ever seen her. Her eyes were wild and unfocused, looking straight through Luca. We're running out of time. In a torrent of rambled words and tears, Luca broke down. Oh, I, haven't, I was reading it in my head. <laughs> but someone was there in a strange suit. And we hid in the dumpster and had a heavy bag dropped on us. And I think it was a body. And so we ran, but we got split up. And I ran home. And it's all my fault. And now my best friend may never come back. Wow. Just wow. Roxy, still exhausted and angry, softened briefly as her eyes hunted the ground in thought. With a determined sigh, she looked up at Luca. It's not your fault, Luca. Rolo's gonna be okay, I promise. Roxy drew herself up. I'm gonna fix this. Luca, go home. But I wanna help. This is too dangerous for a kid. I can't just sit around, I have to do something. Roxy tried to think of the safest place to send Luca. You go back to that little treehouse you two like to play in. Wait there in case Rolo shows up. 
Sound like a plan? Wiped his cheeks and gave a quick nod. You did the right thing telling me the truth. Now scoot. You really believe his story? What other option do we have? Things have been strange around here, leading up to the festival. My dad has been acting weird lately. Okay, so that squirrel guy was her dad. Well, weirder than normal. Why is this so cold here? This place gives me the willies. Wait at the treehouse in case Rolo shows up. Okay. Off we go. Mr. Nunfrey jumped with a start. Whoa, don't sneak up on an old fella like that. Sorry. Who are you talking to? What? A motion to the phone booth. Oh, no. I was just checking because I thought I heard it ring. But the dang thing never does, of course. Yeah, I've never seen anyone use it, really. The whole thing's a waste of money, if you ask me. Any word from Rolo yet? Not yet. Long time for a boy to lose his way. Rolo knows those woods too well to get lost. I suppose you're right. Silly boy's antics have this whole town worried sick. Antics? We all know Rolo likes to play his little pranks. You think this is a prank? What other possible explanation could there be? He's not playing a prank and he didn't get lost. Someone took him. I know it. How would you know that? Unless... Luca, is there something else that you know? Oh my god, the music's getting so intense. Mr. gently placed one of his substantial hands on Luca's shoulder. Oh my god, is this the guy in the hazmat suit? Dang it, boy. If there's something you know, something that could help your friend, you need to tell folks. Wait, no, he's the guy in the hazmat suit, isn't he? Kind eyes warmed a stern face. It's a it's a trap. There was a deeper emotion hiding beneath it all. Oh no. But Luca could sense something eating away at him. He's the guy in the suit. There was a shame. There was a monster. There was a shame lurking behind those eyes. A deep sadness. If Mr. Nuncreed was that worried about Rollo, maybe he could help. No, don't tell him. Yesterday, Rolo and I were messing around at the old Valentine warehouse. Both of you? You were with Rolo when he went missing? Not exactly, I was hiding in the dumpster. The dumpster? What were you doing in there? We were just looking around at first. Then someone in a strange yellow suit came and dumped something on us. We both got scared and ran. That was the last I saw of him. You got scared by some garbage? Well, that's why you don't go skulking in someone's dumpster. But it wasn't garbage, I think. I think it was a body. I'm sure it was just some trash. No, there was a name tag. It said Deep Engineering. Oh, God. I wish you wouldn't have said that. Why did you have to? I tried, Luca. God knows I tried to keep you safe. Luca attempted to take a step back, but Nuncreed's hand clamped down on his shoulder. No! But you Van Horns can't help yourselves, can you? We were all so close. So close to being done with this. Oh my god. What are you doing? It's out of my hands now. Shit. Dang. As Luca pounded the glass, the floor dropped from under his feet. The inside of the phone booth was now a loose capsule plummeting at gravity's wind. Oh my god, what is this place? This town is like <laughs> some kind of horror movie. He braced for impact. The capsule hurried to a surprisingly smooth stop. He felt a cold rush of air and opened his eyes with hesitance. Two large figures in hazmat suits occluded his view. No. He heard the deep, resigned voice of Mr. Nuncreed over an intercom. He knows too much. And... Dang. No. This isn't the end. Another bad ending. There's still much more. Somehow this went wrong. Okay, 
Let's try something else. Windows to the soul. Oh, look. He looks so innocent. And then the guy's about to murder him. Terrible. All right, I guess we have to go this way. We can fight back. This is a story about struggle. Luca could hear a machine humming somewhere nearby. He felt around wildly, searching for something, anything that could help. And this is the timeline where Roll is not with us. Maybe a tile? He yanked it free, lifting the cold stone. Let me go! Luca swung the tile as hard as he could at the shape that still held fast to his leg. He heard the crack of glass as the stone hit the assailant's mask. With a muffled yelp, the hand let go. Luca was free and scrambled to the door. He never looked back once on the long run home. Chapter 3 Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Next morning, it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. Only the sound of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the grandma is like doing a sting operation for the government or something. So hopefully we tell her something. I just finished jarring a mess of jam last night. Uh-huh. So that'll need to get delivered into town today. Okay. So, what did you and Rolo get up to yesterday? Oh, Rolo had things to do, so I just sort of poked around town. I've set the jam down by the front door. There's two batches to drop off. Mm-hmm. One for Mr. Tolliver at the bag and wag. The bag and wag. And another for Mrs. Fratelli at the diner. Oh, and Mr. Nuncreed. He said he wanted some more. I suspected as much. Yes, he seems to have taken a, take a particular interest in my jam. <laughs> That's what he's interested in. There are some extras in the basket for that enthusiastic gentleman. Just make sure Mr. Fratelli and Tolliver get the ones on top. No problem. Off with you now while the day is still young. Uh, okay, I wasn't actually listening to where she told me the jam was. Was it here? No. Oh, she just pet my head. Mysterious phone call. They use a, one of those old phones with the spinning dialer. Hello, it's Juniper Hartford. Before you hang up, just hear me out. I have a business proposition. A simple, the simple matter is that we both have the same problem that needs solving. Very well, we can meet tonight. Okay, maybe she's not here to help. Oh god, I have to carry this. Okay, sorry about yesterday. Roxy can be so annoying. The good news, no more boring chores for me today. Did you make it to the old Valentine warehouse? So, what did you find? Give me the dirt. Something happened. There was someone else there. What? Who was it? Was it aliens? I knew it would be aliens. No. Zombies? No. Alien zombies? What else could it possibly be? Rollo. I gotta deliver these into town first. We can catch up after. Oh, is it a whole thing? It sounds like a whole thing. Yeah, we shouldn't talk about it here. Meet me at the treehouse tonight. I'm not sure what this treehouse you speak of is. <sighs> Meet me at mission control. Roger that, space cadet. Alright, where is this? Oh, this is where we came from. Oh, yeah, I completely forgot that's where we came from. Like when we started. So, let's see. I need to go to... Uh, uh, probably not him. Oh, it's Joey. Are you... Eh, come on. You still looking for bugs, Joey? Wait, watch your step. Oh, sorry. There was a whole family of beetles here. They've gone missing. I thought they sort of just wandered around. Everyone has a home, Luca. Even beetles. 
I think we're okay. It's weird that they're gone. They went missing when the festival preparations began. You think the noise scared them away? Something like that. Just watch where you step, okay? You know, I never really thought about it. Like, like beetles and uh, other bugs like that having a home. Okay, where is the bag and wag? Is that this like coffee shop over here? Oh wait, this crocodile lady has some more foreshadowing for us. Anger from the past, mistakes not yet made, and a glimmering hope for the future. He carried them all in equal parts everywhere he went. Oh heavens, what a burden to bear. It's funny, I guess if you forget what was going on, she kind of like gives you a little bit of a recap. No one's gonna talk to me? Okay, I guess this is not the right place. Maybe the bag and wag is the bakery? You guys have anything to say? Mr. Wilder, I trust you have time to chat. Valentine, oldest of sharper Valentine's children, and heir to the Valentine fortune. Oh. Making questions seem like demands. Certainly. What seems to be the problem? Mr. Wilder had learned to assume that if he was hearing from Aerith, it was because she had taken issue with something he had put in the paper. I couldn't help but notice that the front page of this morning's paper was consumed with stories about this silly festival. Well, yes, it's the news of the day, but there was no mention of the museum, nor of the foundation through which it was endowed. I'm sorry, Miss Valentine. My readers are more so interested in this town's future, rather than any one family in particular. Huh. There was a time, Mr. Wilder, when the goings-on of my family was the only thing this count cared about. Well, things change, ma'am. And you know, change is dangerous. If you finish that thought... I will make that monocle a permanent fixture of her anatomy. My apologies. Good day, Miss Valentine. Did I give you the impression that this conversation was finished? His gaze and began to his well, good day, Mr. Wilder. Dang. Very typical, stuck up, uh, self entitled snobbery, I suppose. Hello. Hey, Don. Yawn. Hey, Luca. What's up? Don They got you on jam delivery, huh? Yep. Hey, Dawn, have you noticed anything weird around town lately? What sort of weird things? Stuff going on at the old Valentine building? Hmm, you might say I've heard some things. I'm working on a story about it right now. So what's going on? Can't say quite yet. Still need to follow up on a few leads. Keep me in the loop, okay? Sure thing. Have you seen the new kid around yet? New kid? Yeah, came in from the big city. Her parents both got jobs here. But get this, one of them is working for William Care and Perennial Harvest. And the other is working for Eris Valentine. And the Valentines represent Beacon Pine's past. Perennial Harvest has positioned itself as this town's future. Must make for some interesting dinner table conversations. I can imagine. Luca is very uninterested. Well, it's the mayor. If I could just be left alone, young Mr. Van Horn. Oh, sure. Sorry to bother you. It's just that I'd like to stew in my depression. Mr. Kerr has asked me to make the opening speech at the festival. Being mayor and all, you might expect me to be a charismatic speaker. The truth is, I'm terribly nervous. I really don't think I'm cut out for this sort of thing. Cut out for being mayor or for public speaking? Both, I suppose. I never really chose any of this. It's more of a duty to my family. For our legacy. That sounds like a heavy burden. As for the festival, just speak from your heart. I'm sure it'll be great. Aw, oh, I feel bad for him. He's like the bullied, the bullied child. They like forced him to do what they wanted instead of letting him do what he wanted. Well, if it isn't my favorite little jam runner, Oh, okay, so I'm running jam to this person and the squirrel guy, so she's, like, sneaking some communications or something to them. Hey, Miss Fratelli. Look at you. And, pinch Luca's cheek. and that's why she wants to make sure I give the right jam to the right person. You're all skin and bones. Is your grand not feeding you? 
She is, it's just... I understand. You know, I taught your mama how to cook back in the day. You may not even remember, but you and her used to help out in the diner. See that picture over there? That's you helping your mama back in the day. So cute, running around, your little apron, taking orders. That whole situation just breaks my heart, what happened with Eleanor. Dang. I've got a feeling she's out there somewhere, yearning to be with you again. Few things in this world can keep a mother from her son. Oh yes, let's see here. Ah, they even have my name on them. How thoughtful. I uh, wonder why. You tell your grand hello for me, Luca. Will do. God. Or maybe it's like explosive jelly or something. What are we delivering? We're like being used as an accessory to crime. Sad. Oh, it's another another one of these. Oh, look, I'm so cute in my little apron. My little kid. All the dogs are like friends with each other, and all the other animals kind of just hang out by themselves. A little strange. I'm ready to help, Mama. All right, little buckaroo. It's up to us to feed these folks while Mrs. Fratelli is away. I've got to deal with the inventory before I can start cooking. Do you think you can handle taking some orders in the meantime? Yes, Mama. Hi, Roxy. Luca? I'm helping. Wow, hopefully your work ethic will rub off on Rolo. Well, what can I get you? Hmm, I'm not really feeling like a burger. How about a chicken sandwich with bacon on top? Coming right up. Okay, chicken sandwich with bacon. Oh, I have to go make it first. Uh, wait. Which one of these is chicken? Oh, chicken tender. Wait, what is this then? Chill? Is this like ham? Okay, chicken tenders with bacon? There's the bacon. Here you go. I call it the love me tenders. Nice. Aren't you a little young to be waiting tables? I'm just helping out. Uh, my father had me hustling when I was your age as well. Father always says, children are to be sales, pulling a family ever forward. Wow, that's depressing. That doesn't sound very fun. There's plenty of time for fun. <clears throat> for instance, father and I always make time to have lunch together once a month. Oh my god, this is so depressing. This poor guy. Should I come back? Oh no, it turns out father was too busy to have lunch today. I'll just go ahead and eat alone. Oh, the silver lining is without him around, I can have my usual. A nice stack of cold cuts topped with a pile of sloppy chili. Yeah, I got you, man. I feel really bad for him, actually. Is that chili? Yeah, that's the chili. Let's go. Sloppy Joe's with some ham. Here you go, my man. Cold cuts with steaming hot chili on top. I call it the hot and cold. That's perfect. Thank you. I've not met this person yet. Gadzooks, they've shrunk the wait stuff. How's your pops doing? He's been pretty busy these days. I know the feeling. Tell him that fish and roddy order should be ready next week, week will ya? Sure thing. I've been in the mood for something sweet. You got a burger that can satisfy a sweet tooth? A sweet burger? Yeah, and top it off with some grilled cactus. Grilled cac- okay. Cactus is delicious. The heart wants what the heart wants. Also, peanut butter on burgers. Also very good. Okay, wait, so do I put a burger patty on or do I put the candy on? Uh, and he wanted cactus? Oh, here you go. Oh, it's gonna go all the way around. Here's your order. I call it the sweet and stabby. You didn't peel the burger or the cactus. You're not supposed to serve it with the needles in it. Looks like we're missing a few things. Why don't you run out and grab some more ingredients? Okay, I'll be back. Oh, I see. I need ingredients for everyone's order. Makes sense. I like the way they add those little memories and you can come back to them once you have more of the badges. That's very clever. Okay, I probably don't want to go to... Oh, let me out! Oh, okay. 
I was like, wait, what's happening? <laughs> How do you keep the ice cream cold? We keep them on ice. Where do you get the ice from? I don't know. Somewhere cold. How do they keep somewhere cold? Cold. Look, Bert. Do you want ice cream or not? No, I'm good. <laughs> That's funny. When I was little, I would always get yelled at for asking too many questions. Oh, I'm kicking the melon now. I got an achievement just now. That's funny. Huddled at his counter, Hiram Tolliver was meticulously shining apples. More accurately, Hiram Tolliver was meticulously shining one apple. Hello? Yep. With a yelp, Mr. Tolliver fumbled the apple, flailing at the air as it fell. Oh, sorry. Uh, -huh. uh no bother, no bother. I see you have something for me. Yeah, Grandson had some jam I'm supposed to give you. Jam? Yeah, these ones on top. She wrote your name on them. Ah, oh, yes! The jam! Thank you so much for delivering this jam. Definitely not a weapon to me. I shall put it on my store shelves post-haste. Okay, I should finish my deliveries. Of course. Of course. Of course. He's not very good at being a spy. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I gotta give that melon another kick. It's just so satisfying. Yeah, well... <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, rewarded. Finally, game developers who appreciate a good melon smacking. Hi, Kato. Good afternoon, Luca. Can I help you find something? Maybe, maybe not. Try me. Well, there's been some weird stuff going on at the old Valentine warehouse. Can't say I know anything about the old warehouse, but empty hives don't stay empty for long. Huh? The bee book. The more I read about bees, the more similarities I see with people. If a hive collapses and fails, it doesn't stay empty for long. A new queen will set up shop pretty quickly. So you're saying it would make sense for someone new to start using the warehouse? Nature abhors a vacuum. Abhors? Abhors? Hey, Jace. Oh, hey, Luca. Have you seen this new issue of Hank Atomic? Not yet. No spoilers, please. It's awesome. It's a flashback. No spoilers, please. We cannot stop. We get to see how mild-mannered Henry Adams becomes. Hank Atomic, man of space justice. Jace, no spoilers. Oh, sorry. My point is, you're gonna love it. All right, Jace. Catch you later. Roger that, space cadet. Wait, are there new books on the shelves? Uh, more like Michael... Complete loss of interest. The bottom corner shelf was a dusty array of thick science books. Only one binding was clean enough to read. Cellular biology and the chemistry of mitosis. Mitosis. Boring. Nerd. Oh, I guess you can't see that. I, I just got an achievement that says nerd. All right, creep. Here's your jam. Got some jam for you, Mr. Nutcreed. Luca, you seem chipper. Well, aside from being on delivery duty, it's a nice day. I suppose it is. So, do you want your jam? Oh, right. Usually, Juniper drops these off herself. I guess she's busy today. Anyway, this is my last delivery for the day. Oh, in that case... I'll hold on to the basket until the next time I see your gram. Oh my god. Oh, hello. Hey, you! Anchovies or pineapple? What? Don't think. Just answer. Pineapple. Why? How old are you? Twelve. Perfect. Follow me. Who are you? Anyone ever tell you you ask too many questions? Just try to keep up, okay? Well, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna go see what, what Beck wants. What just happened? Well, Hey, what a crazy coincidence! Here's my new friend I was just telling you about! Oh, that's wonderful! 
Oh, I see the the non squirrel creature. I'm not sure what she is. Is she like the is she Beck's mom or something? Yep, we just hit it off. Oh really? Get this. Oh wait, are they both his parents? Get this, his favorite pizza topping in the whole world is pineapple. Oh um and what is your new little friend's name? Locked eyes with Luca. The look on her face was equal parts expectant and desperate. Oh no. Luca Van Horn, nice to meet you. I'm Nelly, and this is Ilona. Okay, yeah, we're Beck's parents. Gave Luca a quick nudge. Oh yeah, Beck told me all about you. Already feels like we've known each other for years. So you can both stop obsessing about me making friends. Oh darling, we never doubted you. It's just that, for children with fewer than five close friends, the probability of a stunted development doubles, I see. You're the numbers, mom. Well, one down, four to go, I guess. What Nelly means is that we just want this move to be as easy on you as possible. You can relax. A friend has been friended. This calls for a celebration. Luca, you must join us for dinner tonight. Dinner? Wow, another coincidence. I actually already asked him and he said he would love to. It's just wonderful. In that case, we should pick up some groceries. You two don't get into too much trouble now. See, this is how you make friends. You just uh, strong arm them into agreeing to be your friend in front of your parents. Wow, I can't believe that worked. Thanks a ton. You're welcome. I owe you one. My moms are great and all, but they can be a bit much sometimes. Our house is the little cottage next to- Oh, they live in that house that I've been trying to get into. Wait, you live on the Valentine Estate? Yeah, that's the spot. Meet me by their big creepy gate. Don't be late. Or I'm back to square one of this whole friend grift. Great, see you there. No response. Meet Beck at the creepy gate. Uh, that was this way, I think. Oh, it's this guy. Good morning, Jeff. Jeff? What's so good about it? Another day further down the tubes, if you ask me. Come on now, it's not all bad. The festival is coming up. Heh, <laughs> the festival. Old man Valentine used to put on cock and mimi shindigs all the time. And where did that get us? Well, it's perennial harvest, putting on this one, and they're doing it for the whole town. As far as I can see it, the difference between the old Valentine company and this new Valentine outfit for a bit. is the difference between this empty soup can and this brown banana. But those are both garbage. Exactly. Jeff gets it. Can I get into the telephone booth? No. Do do do. Meet Beck at the big creepy gate. So who all lives in that house? Eris and Gus Valentine grew up there. And Solomon moved in a few years back. The creepy little kid in the vest? That sounds like the one. So just three people live in that huge thing? I bet a bunch of shady stuff happens all the time in a place like that. Not really. The Valentines pretty much keep to themselves. So it's empty and boring. Pretty much. What a waste. My mom says that it used to be way busier back before Sharper died, before the foul harvest. Oh, that's like the fifth time someone mentioned this foul harvest thing. And you all use that same ominous tone. Eventually you're going to explain to me how that harvest got all fouled up, but we can't keep my parents waiting anymore. This way. It's true, they still haven't told us what it is. Although it's probably got something to do with the creepy fertilizer goop. Most kids would have just ditched me by this point. Why are you still here? You look like you could use some help. You know what, Luca? You're not so bad. Let's get through this as simply as possible. Just eat, smile, and nod. Fun. Great. Whatever you do, don't bring up their work. I think I can handle that. Yep, time to bring up their work. Here goes nothing. Chapter 4 Dinner with the Mood Wills Mood Wills. It's a cool name. About change. A gardener at heart. She understood the necessity of change. Relied on it, even. But there was a difference between the controlled world of her plants and this cluttered cottage in the strange town. Almost done. Nellie was a blur of activity, digging through boxes. 
fell in love, couldn't find the dishes, we'll have to make do with paper plates. Dinner went by without much conversation. As she watched Beck and Luca finish up their pizza, Ilona let herself relax into the chair. The things she cared about were still here. Nellie finally had the job of her dreams. Beck was beginning to take root. Ilona's task was simply to tend to that she could do that. So Luca, tell us a bit about yourself. Where do you live? Oh, I live with my grandma. On the over on the other side of the river? Your grandma? Where are your parents at? Beck, manners. It's alright. My dad passed away in an accident at the fertilizer plant six years back. Oh dear. My mom's been missing for a few months now. Oh my god, they invited him over to have like a nice dinner. Like missing, missing? Eyes were fixed to his plate, pushing a chunk of pineapple around with his finger. Oh, they even made pineapple. Broke the silence. Luca, how did you like the pizza? Oh, it was good. Very good. Normally we'd have put more effort into dinner. Toward the boxes. We aren't fully settled in yet, and Beck had mentioned that's your favorite. I'm sorry, are we just skipping the part where he said his mom was missing? Beck. I'm sorry, Luca. This move has us all a little he tired. His face with his sleeve. No, it's fine. So Beck said that you moved here for work? Beck gave Luca a swift kick under the <laughs> ah. I mean, what brought you to Beacon Pines? Oh, you were right the first time. We're here for work. Nelly won't tell you this, but she's a brilliant chemist. I don't know about brilliant, but I do love it. She's brilliant. Perennial Harvest just made her their newest lead researcher of deep engineering. Oh my god. That's because the other guy is dead. She makes it sound more impressive than it is. I'm just happy that I get to make a difference in the world. Perennial Harvest is at the forefront of evolving agriculture into something more useful than sprinkling water or excrement, excrement on the ground. She seemed to be holding her breath. What Nellie means, Luca, is that there are different ways to grow, grow plants. Yes, some people talk to their plants and hope for the best. And some people happily leave their job to allow a loved one to pursue their dream. Oh boy, you swore you didn't! Slammed her fist into the table. Perhaps harder than she intended. Oh god, this just got awkward. Hey Luca, how about some dessert? I actually have to meet my friend Rolo soon. Well, this dinner did not go very well. Looks like there's a storm brewing. I should get going. Oh, I didn't think there was any rain in the almanac. Yeah, almanacs aren't that useful around here. Thank you all for the pizza. It was really good. See you at the festival, Beck. Wait up. I'll walk you home. Surprised, Luca turned around. He knew Rolo could be prickly around new people. But Beck seemed cool. Rolo would warm up to her eventually. Probably. Luca began to respond, but the sky answered for him as the clouds above began to break or rumble. Let's go with break. Luca began to respond, but the sky answered for him as the clouds above began to break, revealing patches of star-filled summer night. Moonlight filtered down, shimmering in the treetops. Sure, you can meet Rolo. You're not going home? No, I promised Rolo I'd tell him about... Stopped himself mid-sentence. Promise you'd tell him what? Spit it out, bud. We're thick as thieves now. If there's a juicy secret, you gotta tell me. Okay, you can come to the treehouse and I'll tell you both what happened. Heck yeah. Well, that was a very awkward dinner. By the gate. So you're telling me there's nothing mysterious or creepy about this place? It's mostly boring and empty. I refuse to believe that. Big spiked gate, looming mansion. Rich, reclusive owners. It even smells shady. Maybe they're Batman. Iron bars and shook the gate. Mark my words, you decadent nightmare house. You will reveal your secrets to me. Oh. 
what did you do? First of all, I told you so. Second, hide. Oh god, it's the creepy guy. That's Eris Valentine. Who's that she's talking to? Shh. I expect you to return that suit in working order. Of course. As long as everything proceeds as planned, there's nothing to worry about. The only thing I'm worried about is what's rightfully mine. If that means making some unsavory alliances, so be it. I couldn't agree more. There comes a time to suspend hostilities. I'll deal with our common threat. Now this is what I was talking about. Was an excited whisper. Proper shady stuff. Someone in a suit like that grabbed, tried to grab me yesterday. Seriously? Shh. You do understand that when this all inevitably fails, I will deny everything. I wouldn't expect any less of you. You just worry about your part in this and let me handle the rest. I can't wait to see the look on that rube... Rube? Ruby? Care's face. Yes, the truth will come to light. I'm still surprised you're so comfortable with the potential collateral damage. If there's one thing I've learned, it's that change is painful. Wow, I was expecting Shady, but that's just flat-out supervillain talk. If you don't mind me asking, why? Why are you doing all of this? Oh my god, it's Grandma. Family. wrenching her hand an answer i can certainly respect grand tussled her hair back under the face mask oh my god just remember keep everything nice and normal until the festival i don't need lessons in rousing suspicion gave Eris a curt nod and disappeared into the night oh my god it was grandma i thought it was going to be the creepy store guy so maybe the store guy is working for no because the store guy threw us in the elevator he's working for care and grandma is working for herself and eris is also doing her own thing there's like three supervillain schemes going on at once after checking to make sure the coast was clear bex gave him a gentle tug on his sweater Maybe there's more than one hazmat person, though. What's wrong? You look like you've seen a ghost. Why were you so scared of that old lady in the hazmat suit? That was my gran. That was your gran? Yeah. Okay, well... I'm sure there's a perfectly reasonable explanation for all of this. Let's just get to the treehouse and figure things out there. Lead the way. Dang. Well, that's frightening. Did... Wait, but, like, wouldn't she have seen him if she was, grab, like, dragging him? Oh, God, it's the clones. For the last time, there's nothing to worry about. Of course not. We're not worried. Clipboard finished writing with a scratchy flourish and looked up. Just doing our... Dotting our I's and crossing our T's. Well, maybe try minding your P's and Q's. If there's anything you need knowing, you'll know it. Absolutely. If you'll just sign here, acknowledging everything is accurate, we'll be out of your hair in a flash. Oh, for the love of... He snatched the pad and scribbled his name so hard, the pen nearly snapped. There. And would you like my eternal soul as well? Clipboards looked at each other for a moment, almost pondering the possibility, then broke into laughter as they walked away. <laughs> I, I can't tell if those are like creepy clones or just like the game is like kind of stereotyping the foxes as all being the same. Hi, Mr. Nuncreed. Luca, let me give you some advice. The next time someone you don't know asks to hear your thoughts, give them a good hard bop right in the kisser. Oh, Grant tells me to just keep away from the clipboards. That's good. That's good. Your gran is a small lady, Luca. Speaking of which, you better run along home now. Too dark out to be wandering on your own. 
in this world, he doesn't murder me. Looks ask the Oracle if there's anything new going on. The figure intoned. Are you prepared to live with the truth? Oh god. I guess not. Uh, nothing new here. I wanted to see if the squirrel and the diner lady are both missing. Yeah, they're both gone, right? Are they working with Gran? Is everyone in this town? What? Are they all like... I better not dilly-dally. Gotta get to the treehouse. Are they like... I want to believe that Gran is like working for the government or something and she's like the good guy, you know? Another day, another dollar. See you tomorrow, Z. Have you noticed how all the perennial harvest folks order the same drink? Decaf cappuccino with extra foam? Why? I don't know. Just thought it's a little odd. Pretty weird for sure. Well, the customer's always right. See you bright and early tomorrow. I <sighs> can't wait. Decaf cappuccino with extra foam. Oh, there's one office light on. Who could that be? It's not Care, because he's out here. Nah. William Kerr and Gus Valentine proudly surveyed the half-covered festival banner. It's all coming together quite nicely. Couldn't have done it without you. I'm not so sure about that. Nonsense! That reminds me, I wasn't able to thank her sister for your contributions. Yes, she has been indisposed of late. She doesn't like me much, does she? Oh no, that's not it at all. She's just been busy. Of course! Regardless, I could be forever grateful if you could pass my thanks on to her. The history of the museum adds a whole air of import to the whole affair. And we couldn't very well celebrate the story of Beacon Pines without including the Valentines. My father was a great man. You're darn tootin' he was. But I mean the entire Valentine family, present company included. Can I ask you something, Mr. Kerr? Call me William. Ask away. William. Why are you doing all of this? Gosh, I've never felt one needed a compelling reason to throw a party. Not just the festival. All of this. There's got to be a hundred down-on-their-luck towns out there. Why is Perennial Harvest so invested in helping vegan pines? You know what I love most about the agriculture business? Seeds! Seeds? Yep, little bundles of potential. You treat a seed right, nurture it, feed it, and it can grow into something truly special. You see potential here? Undoubtedly. The seed of greatness is already under our feet. All it needs is a little nudge. And the right leadership, of course. Oh. Good night, Mayor Valentine. Dang, Kara's trying to play Gus over here. Play on his ego. This kind of reminds me of like those giant, the news articles I see about those like giant agro companies that like copyright seeds and stuff, you know? Oh, this is nice. Yeah, the treehouse is just a little further on from here. So what's your buddy Rolo like? Rolo, he's Rolo. Not particularly helpful. Sorry, I've just never thought about it. Lots of energy. He's funny, even when he's not trying to be. Things have been tough for his family since the foul harvest. It's about damn time you tell me what this foul harvest thing is. It's kind of a long story. Hit me with the highlights. Okay. There used to be a fertilizer company here called Valentine's. They were kind of a big deal. Oh, big deal fertilizer. It was a big deal to us. Their stuff really worked. Farmers loved it. So Valentine's grew and grew. Beacon Pines pretty much grew around it. Most everyone in town either worked for Sharper Valentine or used his fertilizer. Things were good. I'm sensing a big butt. Around six years ago, Sharper Valentine suddenly died and something changed. Changed how? Could have been a bad batch. Maybe it was in the water, or the air, the soil. Nobody knows. But all the crops died and everyone blamed the Valentines. The foul harvest. Yeah. Valentine's fertilizer went out of business. Half the town lost their jobs. Sheesh. 
and next year the crops came back, but something was different. You plant a crop, do everything right, and it's sort of a crapshoot what happens. And no one knows why? Nope. I take it Rolo's farm got the short end of the stick? Yep. For some reason, their farm was hit harder than others. That sucks. Things have gotten better since the perennial harvest came to town. The Beacon's Pines Reborn Initiative? Yep, first thing they did was give the town a deep scrub. They even put us up in hotels, one town over for a week while they decontaminated the groundwater. Yeah, that's what they were doing. Not setting up secret facilities. We better get going. Come on, people, open your eyes. Put on your tinfoil hats. It's about time. I was about to give up and go home. Who's the new kid? Name's Beck. You must be Rolo. I see my reputation precedes me. Welcome to Mission Control. You'll find we've spared no expense in construction. I've seen worse looking piles of junk. Thanks! Hey Luca, you know the security concerns we talked about? Yeah. While I was waiting, I made some improvements. Let me lock this baby down for a little test infiltration. Can't be too safe these days. Oh, we can pull the ladder up now. <laughs> so he, they stole a car door and put it as the door to their treehouse. Wait, what is happening in there? He goes all out, doesn't he? Always. Lavish. Uh, so... You gonna let us up? Oh, I see. I have to hit the target. Oh my god. I'm bad at this. Uh. Uh. Got it. Oh my god, there's more. Okay. Stop. Now it's moving. Uh. Okay. Where did you guys get all this junk in the first place? There's a guy in town named Joff who trades us junk for snacks. Junk for, for junk food for junk. Nice. So pretty sweet security, right? It was imaginative. I'll give you that. Luca, are we sure we can trust the new recruit? I'll vouch for her. Thanks, I guess. Okay, Luca, you promised to fill me in about the Valentine warehouse. Uh. So like I said, there was someone there. What were they doing? Wait. If that person in the suit was his grandma, she threw out a body. <laughs> God. I don't know, but the place was lit up and active. Maybe they were squatters? I don't think so. It seemed more organized. When the man pulled me in, I saw some sort of equipment running. A man pulled you in? Yeah, but I got away. You keep saying it was a man. They were wearing a mask, right? Yeah. Then it could have been a woman. How did you get away? I grabbed a rock or something and broke their mask. They let go and I ran. Dang. Oh, so maybe that wasn't grandma then? That's intense. No wonder you freaked out when you saw your grandma. Yeah, that's the other part. On our way here, Beck and I saw Aris Valentine meeting with Gran, wearing the same sort of hazmat suit. And they weren't there for idle chit chat. It was a proper clandestine meetup. So let me get, th these kids are like 10 and they're using words like clandestine. So let me get this straight. There's an operation in full swing at the Valentine Warehouse. And you were almost abducted by a strange man or woman in a protective suit. And then you saw your gran in the same suit talking to Eris Valentine. Pretty much. I'm beginning to think this town is kind of awesome. No offense. And so we can logically conclude aliens or alien zombies have infiltrated the town. And their leader is your gran. And she tried to murder you. First of all, and for the last time, there are no aliens. Second, it couldn't have been my gran at the warehouse. I broke that person's mask to get away. The mask gran was wearing wasn't damaged. Well, I mean, she probably has more than one, but she's definitely hiding something. Maybe. I'm pro-gran, though. I want to I wanna believe gran is the good guy in this. Your gran is weird, but she might be the most boring person in the universe. All she does is sit around all day making jam. What could she possibly have to hide? I don't know. We haven't talked much since she moved in. Moved in? 
your grand isn't from here? No, she came a few months back to take care of me after after his mom went missing. Did you know your grand before? Not really, no. It'd been years since I'd seen her. Luca, don't take this the wrong way. But are we sure your gran is on the up and up? Luca gazed out the window. Are we sure your grandma is actually your grandma? I'm just saying. It sounds like strange stuff has been happening since she showed up. We could say the same thing about your family, but you're right. Luca, your grand is hiding something, and Pa always says folks only bury stuff worth digging up. We need to investigate your house. If my grand is really hiding something, don't you think I would have noticed by now? That's kind of the whole point of hiding something. I guess you're right. Grand's been leaving the house for hours at a time this week. I'll call you two tomorrow when the coast is clear, and we can start getting to the bottom of this. I'm always game for a good snoop. You can count me in. Chapter six. Oh man, the story's getting crazy. There's like schemes on schemes on schemes. Grandma is like a villain or pot, hopefully like an investigator. And I mean, obviously Care was like a crazy villain. That's no surprise. And Eris Valentine is also trying to do something. Uh, I'm not too sure she's actually like a super villain, though. She's she seems like she's kind of just like stuck up, you know, and she wants to be like a super villain. But I'm not really buying into it right now. Um, and I don't know what's up with Gus. Like he's just getting. Um, like care is just like playing him, I guess. I mean, poor Gus. He's got like daddy issues. He's got like serious daddy issues. <laughs> um, but yeah, this story's pretty good. I actually like this quite a bit. Uh, anyways, I'm going to stop here. I don't want to get too ahead of myself and do like a giant chunk all at once. And this seems like a good spot to, to end for the night. So thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe and all that. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think of the story so far. Maybe what your crazy theories are. Although I guess maybe don't do that because you probably have played the game already or know how it ends. So please don't spoil it. Um, but if you haven't played it before, yeah, just like uh, maybe leave your theories in the comments or something. Anyways, see ya.